हे एवरी वन वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इनहेरिटेंस ऑफ क्वालिटेटिव एंड क्वान्टिटेटिव ट्रेड्स दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी इन इंग्लिश सो इफ यू आर कम्फर्टेबल इन हिंदी देन यू कैन स्विच टू दी वीडियो विच इज इन हिंदी आई विल प्रोवाइड इट्स लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट इड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वट इज क्वालिटेटिव इनहेरिटेंस सो इनहेरिटेंस ऑफ क्वालिटेटिव ट्रेड्स और मैंडेलियन ट्रेड्स रेफर्स टू क्वालिटेटिव इनहेरिटेंस दिस शोज डिसकॉन्टिन्यूअस वेरिएशन इन दफ टू प्रोजेनी सो देयर वुड बी डिस्टिंक्ट फिनोटिपिक क्लासेस इन दफ टू प्रोजेनी This type of inheritance is controlled by a single gene having two alleles. So the allelic pairs would exhibit dominance. That is, one of the allele would be dominant over the other. There could be more than one gene involved, and those genes could show interaction, as in the case of epistasis. Now we can say that the qualitative inheritance is mainly governed by genetic constitution of the organism only, and the environment plays no role in the qualitative inheritance. For example, plant height, flower color, etc. So all those traits which were studied by Mendel showed qualitative inheritance. Now we would be discussing about quantitative inheritance. So this is the inheritance of quantitative traits or polygenic traits. This shows continuous variation. Uh, that is, there would be gradation of phenotypic expression in the F two progeny, and there would be involvement of more than one gene. having different alleles so the allelic pair are also known as the contributing alleles would not exhibit dominance as in the case of qualitative inheritance but can show additive effect so if a single dominant allele is affecting a particular trait then uh, if the number of dominant alleles are more in a particular individual then that individual would show higher phenotypic expression as compared to the um, uh, organism which is having only one dominant allele so there would be no epistasis as such and these type of traits are also known as metric traits quantitative traits and polygenic traits as there are many genes involved therefore it is also known as polygenic inheritance we can also say that quantitative inheritance is governed by both the genetic constitution of the organism and also the environment for example body weight height egg or milk production all these traits show quantitative inheritance so the first and major uh, example of quantitative inheritance was shown by nilsson ehle's experiment which was performed to know the kernel color in wheat and what is what was the gradation of the kernel color which was seen in wheat now this type of experiment basically uh, consists of uh, cross a cross between two parents one parent having the dark red green color while the other parent was having white green color when they the scientists crossed these two plants they showed that in the f1 progeny there was intermediate red coloration in the kernel color of wheat after selfing the f2 progeny showed can be categorized into seven distinct classes having different gradation of red coloration and their ratio was 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1 so this is the ratio that we uh, get in the case of quantitative inheritance so this ratio is very important for you all to learn and uh, there are different contributing alleles so if the phenotypic appearance of the kernel uh, wheat kernel is dark red then there would be num uh, six contributing alleles so the um, individual should have six dominant alleles for the dark red coloration to appear now as the number of contributing alleles keeps on decreasing the coloration of the uh, kernel color also uh, starts to fade 
so if uh, the kernel color is dark red in the case of six dominant alleles then there would be white coloration in the case of zero dominant alleles so all the recessive alleles would not show any phenotypic expression and the kernel color would appear white it can be shown by the help of this graph so here you can see there are seven distinct classes to which wheat kernel color can um, appear so here you can see that there is a bell shaped curve this is the characteristic feature of quantitative inheritance so in the case of quantitative inheritance there would always be a bell shaped curve due to different gradation of phenotypic expression in the f2 progeny now what are the other examples of quantitative inheritance so skin color in humans is also a very good example of quantitative inheritance it was studied by davenport and it, it he determined that the skin color in humans is controlled by at least 3 genes having two alleles each and the amount of the uh, pigment which is present in the skin determines the color of the uh, human skin and that pigment is known as melanin so the individuals who inherited uh, who inherit no dark alleles will have very light skin coloration that is if the individual is not having any dominant allele responsible for melanin production then the person would show very less or uh, almost nil melanin content in the skin now those individuals that inherit only dark alleles will have very dark skin color and the individuals who inherit different combination of light and dark alleles that is dominant and recessive alleles will have different phenotypic classes having various various skin shades so this was another example of quantitative inheritance another important example is eye color in humans so it was shown that uh, human eye color is determined or influenced by up to 16 different genes having two alleles each and it is also determined by the same pigment the same skin pigment that is melanin so the black and dark brown eyes are due to more melanin component in the iris of the skin as compared to green or hazel eyes and blue eyes is known to have no melanin in the iris so the number of dominant alleles here also determine the amount of melanin pigment in the eye color of humans next example is corolla length in tobacco so this was studied by east in 1916 and he crossed different tobacco lines with average corolla length of 40 cm and 90 93 cm so one parent was having the corolla length of 40 cm while the other was having 93 cm corolla length in the f1 progeny he showed that the corolla length was almost intermediate between the parents that was 63 cm after selfing in the f2 generation he found out that there were wide variation uh, in the corolla length in the f2 progeny and this these all these results indicated that there are five or more genes which are involved in the expression of corolla length so all these examples belongs to quantitative inheritance in further videos we are going to discuss other important topics of genetics or biochemistry so if you found this video helpful then please like share and subscribe i would be uploading more informative videos in the future so stay tuned goodbye